What if the very leaders we vote for, those promising justice, are tied to the very system that once profited from slavery? In this episode, we uncover the connection between recent U.S. presidents, their Ivy League backgrounds, and their ties to slavery. Asking the tough question, can we ever vote our way to reparations when the system is built on the backs of those we seek justice for? What's going on, y'all, man? Welcome or welcome back to the Broken Traditions Podcast with your host, Laron, aka Real Rap Ron. On this week's episode, we're going to have a conversation about reparations that you're not seeing nowhere else. A tough conversation about reparations. Um, this conversation is going to be about should there be a different approach to obtain reparations when it comes to the reparations for the descendants of slaves? Because the approach that we're doing or the approach that is being done is voting our way to reparations. That is a dead end. That is a dog chasing his tail. And the reason why I say that is because modern presidents, right? Going back to the 90s, modern presidents all have something in common. Ties to slavery. So how can we expect somebody who has ties to slavery champion reparations? Now it's starting to make sense. Now it's starting to make sense because there's always studies. There's always uh, vague answers when politicians are asked about reparations. Senator Obama, your position on reparations? I, I, I think the reparations we need uh, right here in South Carolina is investment, for example, in our schools. Uh, yeah, I, I did a... I, uh, I, I did a... I did a town hall meeting in Florence, South Carolina, uh, in an area called the Corridor of Shame. They've got buildings uh, that students are trying to learn in that were built right after the Civil War. What we need to do going forward, look, it, first of all, we just need to speak truth about history in spite of the fact that some people are trying to erase history and try and teach our children otherwise. We need to speak truth about the generational impact of our history in terms of the generational impact of slavery, the generational impact of, of, of redlining, of Jim Crow law, I could go on and on and on. These are facts that have had impact. Um, and we need, to, we need to speak truth about it. And we need to speak truth about it in a way that is about deriving solutions. And Frankly, I think that we, you know, and part of that is, is studying it to figure out exactly what we need to do. But African-Americans built this nation. We built this nation. You know, you're just starting to get real credit for that. OK, I don't know if you know that. You're just starting to get you built the nation. We all built it. But you were such a massive part of it. Bigger than you were given credit for. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, we, can find that on, we should note we can find that on Biden.com, but I'm not sure what your answer is to the reparations question. If, if in fact, there are ways in which to get direct payments for reparations, I want to see it. But why are we waiting around for the study? We can hit, we can deal well, with Well, they're the not study. mutually exclusive. You don't have to wait around no, for the study. That's a, no, we, but, but they don't, look, they're not mutually exclusive. But I can't believe that whatever it is, the African-American community would not support what I'm talking about. In addition to... Yeah, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think we have to... Let me ask you this, then. Let me ask you this so we can move on, because we've got to get some phone <laughs> calls in as well. But let me ask you this, then. If, in fact, a calculation comes to you that you are satisfied with, would you then say, I'm for reparations? The answer is going to depend on what it was, and will it include Native Americans as well? If you have ties to slavery, why would you champion reparations? When you start looking into this information, it gets very deep that perhaps this is the reason why reparations is a vague conversation when it comes to politicians. That a politician don't have any inclements or any reasoning to give reparations or try to fight for reparations or champion reparations for that matter. 
can we expect a president with ties to slavery to champion reparations? No, we can't. We're not just voting for this candidate, we're voting within a system that is deeply connected to the same injustices that we want to repair. So if that's the case, how could we vote our way to reparations? And if that's the case, should there be another approach? What should be the approach? I'm gonna give you my suggestions at the end of the video. Let's talk about the ties to presidencies, to slavery. So I've been doing some research, right? I started reading this book, um, Ebony and Ivy. And this book started to open my eyes up about the origins of slavery on this land and how slavery really started not in the South, right? You know, it was known for the South. It's really known in, in it really has a lot of ties to the North, right? Um, in this book, it was documented that the first lynching happened in New York. Um, in this book, it gives a, a lot of information about how Ivy League schools are tied to slavery. We're going to talk about that a little bit later and why that is important. But first, let's talk about how recent presidents and their lineage own slaves. So let's start with, I guess, a small one, right? The smaller one, uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, great, 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 great grandfather on his mother's side owned slaves. It's in the U.S. census that they own slaves, right? Now, I'm not going to say Joe Biden's Great, 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 great grandfather had this huge plantation with a whole bunch of slaves while he's sitting on the porch drinking uh, iced tea, looking at his slaves like, you know, like you see in the movies. From what I understand, from what I've seen from my research, Joe Biden family only had uh, maybe two or three slaves, right? So that is a direct lineage to slave ownership. Now let's go to another president, Barack Obama. Barack Obama, on his mother's side, lineage is tied to slave ownership. Now, Barack Obama lineage to slave ownership is a lot uh, more vast than Joe Biden's, like a lot more slaves, but he also, Barack Obama is tied to slave. Then now we go to the Bushes, George H.W. Bush, of course, and his son, George W. Bush. Now, on their mother's side, the slavery runs deep. The slavery ownership is the ones like you see in the movies. The slavery ownership is the ones with the whole, but I mean, they have a great vast of wealth through slavery. So I just named four presidents, right? George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush, Barack Obama, Joe Biden all have direct lineage to slavery. We talk about Republican side, Democrat side. So if that's the case, why would any one of those four men or four candidates push for reparations? Where if the study is saying that people who perhaps own slaves need to pay out, that is going to hurt their pockets, especially with inflation. Why would they even do that, right? Now, I also want to talk about this presidential election. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, great, 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 great grandfather owned slaves in Jamaica, right? So you probably say us in Jamaica, that's different. Oh, ADOS, right? American Descendants of Slaves, Foundational Black Americans. I, I said in the podcast episode that I had a special guest, this bohemian gal, Rogan, I said... I was in the Bahamas and I seen people who looked like me, looked like we could be cousins. And I said, because it could have been a boat stop away where they got dropped off compared to where I, my, my lineage got dropped off. And she said, I agree. But then I started to realize before 1776, when this country was established, when there was slavery that was going on on this land, those slave owners were also shipping back and forth from the Caribbeans. 
with slaves. So they would take their slaves, go to, say, Jamaica, say, Bahamas, Bermuda, Antigua, go to these different countries and go back and forth between different seasons with their slaves. So Kamala Harris lineage ties back to slavery in Jamaica. Who's to say those slaves were not going back and forth between Jamaica and the States? Or going back and forth between another country and stop in Jamaica, stay in Jamaica now, staying here. All that is tied. All that is tied together. And one thing that I've realized uh, when I was doing my research, Kamala Harris family, or her great-great-great-grandfather, he received reparations when he lost his slaves. He received reparations will be equivalent to $10 million in today's time for reparations for losing his slaves. So I just named four presidents, one vice president, one vice president that's running for an election that have ties to slavery. Why would presidents that is deeply connected to slavery want to pay back reparations? How could we vote for reparations when I just named four presidents, right, that have ties to slavery, one vice president who's now running for, to become president that has ties to slavery want reparations? This is why they put the carrot in front of the donkey. This is why they do the test. You think these tests, if I could find this information out, you think these tests that's coming from these Ivy League graduates, which we're going to talk about in a minute, these tests from these Ivy League graduates are going to prove that, hey, perhaps we should pay our reparations be, now that you're tied to it. Why would they want to do that? Why would I admit a wrong of my lineage financially to benefit people? These people are not bred like that. They not. They don't run like that. These people who are in this mindset will not do for you. That's why they give you empty promises. That's why they, they conversations about slavery is so vague. You feel me? Because they, they are directly tied to it. Bush, Bush, Obama, Biden, Harris. Directly tied to it have lineage in it, right? And now let's, let's talk about the studies, right? These, like I said, Ivy League schools. When I was reading that book, Ebony, Ebony and Ivy, I did not realize how Harvard, Harvard University, is so ingrained with slavery. I did not realize that. That was not common knowledge. That was out there. I had to literally study that. Harvard University was literally built. The buildings was built by enslaved people. Harvard University used to gift slaves for graduation. And before we continue with the content, man, make sure you guys hit the like button and follow Broken Traditions wherever you find this content. At. Also, I want to give a special shout out to the Broken Tradition channel members, the, the Tradition Breakers. We got some new people who join the Tradition Breakers. Uh, appreciate you guys for joining, helping me out, helping keep the lights on for Broken Traditions. We're going to have an exclusive uh, podcast recording, right? So what we do here is we have online podcast recordings when I have special guests on. So you guys get to see the behind the scenes and see, you know, we have these great conversations with other content creators and you guys also have input in the comments. That's for channel members only. So if you guys want to join the Tradition Breakers, Hit the link in the show notes, and after that, you could become a channel member and get the exclusive content when we have other people come on. All right, let's continue on with this episode. It is not just Harvard, Yale, Brown, Princeton, Columbia, out in New York. These Ivy League schools has direct lineage to slavery. We ask for reparations, right? People who are pro-reparations ask for reparations. They get studies. And these studies are done by people who graduate from these, these institutions, <laughs> who graduate from these institutions who literally profited from slavery. You see how the you see how the dog is chasing his tail? Why would that school 
knowing that information provide real information about reparations. That's why the dog is chasing his tail. So the people who went there, graduate there, talking about Brown, Yale, Harvard, Princeton, Columbia, those people owned slaves, slave trading, got into slave trading, went to school for one thing to say, all right, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do slave trading instead, there's more money in this. As a matter of fact, most of the people who went to the South that started the bigger plantations in the South were from Ivy League schools from the North. These schools, institutions, are deeply rooted in slavery. And this is another reason why presidents or people you vote for will not champion reparations. <laughs> I met a gentleman, right? He said his tongue in cheek is a joke, but he said he was mad at his grandson for going to Michigan. And the reason why he was mad at his grandson for going to Michigan because their family's an Ohio Buckeyes t- uh, family, right? So, you know, people have direct ties to certain schools and want people to go to certain schools, and that school heritage is very important, right? If... These Ivy League schools are tied to slavery. How many presidents are tied to Ivy League schools? George H.W. Bush, Yale University. Bill Clinton got his Juris Doctor from Yale Law School. George W. Bush, Yale University. Harvard Business School. Barack Obama, Columbia University, Harvard Law School. Donald Trump, University of Pennsylvania. So people are very tied to colleges, right? They're very tied to colleges. Why would somebody who went to an Ivy League school will want to champion reparations when their Ivy League school is tied to it. The Ivy League schools in slavery, Harvard is king. Harvard is king. Yale, Brown, Columbia, all those other schools are tied to it as well. They are tied to it as well. It was, I mean, we have to understand the time. Having a slave, enslaved person was like having a Benz. Not everybody can afford it, but it also was obtainable. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could have a Benz. Not everybody's going to have, you know, uh, a C63 AMG. Somebody might have them an A-class, but you can still obtain it. You feel what I'm saying? It it was obtainable. From George H.W. Bush all the way to Joe Biden, not to mention Donald Trump have his ties to Ivy League schools, not to mention Kamala Harris. No, she's tied to a lineage who owns slaves. Why would they pay you reparations? You have to understand something. So it's, it's a numbers game, right? So I gave you the backdrop why a president would not champion reparations, right? Because either they ties to their school or their ties to their family lineage. But also, let's talk about the numbers game. <laughs> Black Americans... They said that we are between 11 and 13 percent of the population in this com- in this country. Out of that 11, between 11 and 13 percent of this country, the highest turnout out of that 11 percent was only 65 percent that ever voted for a president. So that was when the first time Barack Obama ran. Our average is between 55 and 65 percent of people who could vote would vote. So I just want to put that in perspective. Why would a presidential candidate say to themselves, this person is not even turning out in a big clip out of a percentage? Why would I do anything for them? Why would I even promise them anything? 65% of y'all are voting, and 
out of that 65%, 90% of y'all voting one way. Why do I have to do reparations? Now it all makes sense. Between the voter turnout, our voter uh, predictability, the president's lineage tied to slavery, the president's ties to Ivy League schools who have ties to slavery, you can't vote your way to reparations. Why would they even think about it? We're talking about 65% of 11%. And out of that 65% of 11% or 65% of 13%, and that's the highest turnout, <laughs> vote 90% in one direction. I, I, if I was them, I would be on the same time, same playing time. I'm not, not worried about your votes. I'm not worried about you wanting reparations for what? I'll say this: voting is important, right? If you find a candidate that aligns with you, you know, by all means, vote for that candidate. But achieving reparations can't be your sole purpose for voting. It can't be. These people are too tied to slavery. They would not destroy their lineage or their reputation for their school for 13% of 65% that vote 90% in one direction. They're not doing it. It's not beneficial. Like I said, people are tied to schools and so ingrained in schools that they, they get upset when their kid or their grandkid go to the wrong school of a rival school just because of football team. You think that Barack Obama is going to turn his back on Harvard for reparations? You think Kamala Harris is going to turn her back on her family lineage for reparations? You think Donald Trump is going to turn his back on Ivy League schools for reparations? We just talking about presidents. We ain't talking about lobbyists. We're not talking about senators. We're not talking about governors. We're just talking about presidents. Think about it. Think about how deep this goes. It was okay when Martin Luther King spoke about, you know, civil rights and his peaceful protests and things of that nature. But when Martin Luther King Jr. started speaking about reparations. Same time that America refused to give the Negro any land, through an act of Congress, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize our farms. Not only that, today many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. Now, this is what we are faced with, and this is a reality. Now, when we come to Washington in this campaign, we are coming to get our check. Not too long after he was assassinated. And there was a uh, book. The name of the book is slipping my mind. But there was a book that spoke about how the U.S. government was found guilty for the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., also in the book, the lawyer, he did an interview and he said, now this is what the lawyer said. He said that Martin Luther King Jr. did not die from a gunshot wound. Martin Luther King Jr. died from suffocation. Now, did the shot actually kill him? And if not, how did he die? Oh, the shot did not kill him. We all believed that Martin King was killed by that shot by Strausser. He was still alive when he was taken to the hospital. He was work, being worked on in the emergency room of the hospital. 
And I think the emergency staff were trying to do their best to keep him alive. And he was still breathing and alive. When the neuro, head of neurosurgery of the hospital, Dr. Breen Bland, came in to the emergency room with two other men in suits. And he said to the people in the emergency room, stop working on that nigger and let him die. And then he said, after a pause, now get out of here, all of you, leave this room, get out. And he emptied the room. And as he was uh, emptying the room, a surgical nurse was the last one out. And she uh, heard them do this, like picking up wa water in their mouths. And that caught her attention and she turned and she saw them spit on the body of Dr. King, the three men. Then she saw Bland, Dr. Bland, take a pillow and put it over his face and suffocate him. And that's how Martin King was killed. Now you can say, oh, you only had one witness. You had this black surgical nurse. She went home the next morning, gathered her family around her in, the, in their home and said to them, I don't know why they had to kill him. And she repeated this story. And it was one of her sons who under oath and under video uh, deposition told us all, all this story about how it happened, how she saw it happened. And we, everyone in the room of that video deposition believed him. He was blind and he was a diabetic uh, uh, victim. He had no reason to lie. He was very moving with the way he, he spoke and he told us the truth. Now you he survived the gunshot wound. He died at the hospital from suffocation because the doctor who was supposed to work on him put the pillow over his face. That's what he said in his book. That's what the lawyer for the King family said. So the rabbit hole goes deep. If you, oh, if you pro reparations, I think you really need to rethink your strategy, your plan. Perhaps we got to start a grassroots movement that is impactful, that could reshape a, a, um, a political party. I mean, let's be clear. MAGA was a grassroots movement that reshaped the political party. There has been grassroots movements that reshape political parties. It, voting won't bring reparations. We got to have real strategies if this is something that's going to be achieved. That's why I said in my recent uh, podcast episode, maybe like a, two months ago, I'm conflicted. And now I see why. It's the dog chasing his tail. It's a carrot in front of the donkey. It's just leading you to go a, a certain direction. And we're all actuality. It doesn't matter. Because guess what? They're all tied to slavery. It doesn't matter about the studies they put out there for reparations. When the people who graduated from the schools are the schools that had benefits from slavery. When people who are putting out these tests have ties to slavery. We, we, I don't, it gotta be a different direction. It can't work like this. It can't work with voting our way through reparations. Because the people that are the candidates they have they they have they skin they have skin in the game. They have skin in the game. And I want to end on this note, man. If these schools have ties to slavery, how come they're not giving out free tuitions? Or as a matter of fact, how come they're not paying students to go to school? Like, all right, we gotta right our wrongs. If you're a student who could qualify for the school, why these schools are not doing that? Harvard, Brown, Columbia, uh, uh, um, Yale. How come these schools ain't doing that? Definitely should be ways of they can make it right. They should be able to make it right for us. Let me know how you feel about this in the comments, man. I appreciate your time. All right, man, till next time. Peace. Real Rap Ryan is signing off. All right, later. One.